let's take a look at some of the basic heart anatomy. When you look at the heart, primarily what you're going to see inside and outside are two atria and two ventricles. Now, these are the chambers of the heart. The atria are the smaller, more superior chambers, right? The ones more on top towards what's called the broad base. And these atria <clears throat> are actually little primer pumps. When the ventricles relax, that's when most of the blood fills them. These little atria push some extra additional blood into those ventricles. And that allows those ventricles to push more blood around the body, right? Ventricles going to be pushing that blood to your lungs. Left one's going to be pushing it everywhere else from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. So we'll see these two smaller atria or upper chambers in a picture here in just a second. Again, the little primer pumps, right? A lot of people think this is when most of the blood goes into the ventricles when the atria contract, but it's actually not. <clears throat> They're just pushing some additional blood into them. Now, below the atria are the two ventricles. Those are your two big power pumps right there. This is what's responsible for moving blood around the body. Again, the right one is going to push blood to your lungs. Left one is going to push it everywhere else. When you look at the superior aspect of the heart, right, the very top part is broad compared to the bottom of it, which has a point called an apex. But across this very broad top of the heart, you're going to see there's some very big arteries and veins. We're going to see the superior vena cava that returns all blood from above the heart. There's an inferior vena cava that returns some blood below it, down on the below the right atria. We'll see it here in just a second. But also up there on the base, there's the pulmonary trunk, right ventricle pushes blood into that, and that goes out to your lungs. And there's also this aorta, left ventricle pushes blood into it. So there's one, two, three big arteries and veins at the base of the heart. That inferior vena cava is sort of just below that right atrium, not up at the base, but not far from it. We'll see some big arteries and veins on the surface of the heart, too. These are going to take blood into <clears throat> the cardiac muscle and back out of it. So when you look at the arteries that take blood to that cardiac muscle, and the cardiac muscle is a big consumer of oxygen and other nutrients, seven big arteries get blood to that cardiac muscle. There's two coronary arteries. There's a right and a left. There are two interventricular, what are sometimes called descending arteries. We'll see there's an anterior and a posterior. There are two marginal arteries, a right and a left, and then there's a circumflex artery. We'll see these on pictures in a second. There are also three big veins that take blood out of that cardiac muscle. There's a great and a small cardiac vein on the front, anterior part of the heart. There's a middle cardiac vein to the back. But all three of these lead to the coronary sinus. And you're going to see that's one of the three big inflows inside that right atrium. You'll also see pulmonary arteries and veins. <clears throat> you hear pulmonary, you think lungs. Now remember that arteries always take blood away from the heart and veins take blood back to it. So the pulmonary arteries are taking blood away from the heart and to the lungs. Pulmonary veins do the opposite from the lungs and back to the left side of the heart. You'll also see these coronary sulcus, little grooves. These grooves have got these coronary arteries and a few other structures inside of them there. You can also see from the inside of the heart an interatrial septum. You know, a septum is always a separating structure. Inner means between. So between the atria, there's a wall. There's also an interventricular septum that tells you between the ventricles, there's a wall. And you better have walls between the right and left side of the heart. You didn't have something to separate the right and the left pump, <clears throat> you'd be letting low and high oxygen blood mix, and that'd be very bad for you. You'd have inadequate oxygen delivery. Inside the heart, you're going to see four valves, a tricuspid over on the right side, in between the right atrium and right ventricle. There's a bicuspid or mitral valve over on the left side, between left atria and left ventricle. And sometimes these are also called atrioventricular valves. Just another name for those right there. We'll see the aortic semilunar right at the base of the aorta. It's what the left ventricle pushes blood through to get it through the aorta and out to the body. There's a pulmonary semilunar valve. This is uh, the right ventricle will push blood through it, through the pulmonary trunk into the lungs. We'll also see these chordae tendini associated with this trine bicuspid. These are little tendons, they look like little strings, and are sometimes called heart strings because of that. 
And at the bottom of them, inside the ventricles, are papillary muscles, which pull on these strings. They keep tension on these strings and pull on sort of the bottom inferior aspect of these valves. They keep tension on them. <clears throat> that way they don't prolapse and fall back and allow blood to backflow. It would be very bad for you there. So when you look at this picture of the heart, here's your right atrium. And the left atrium is over on the left side, but a lot to the rear posterior part of the heart, too. Here's your right ventricle, and there's your left ventricle. So notice here's your right pump, and then there's your left pump right there. Look at this broad base. There's a superior vena cava, returning all blood from above the heart. Here's your aorta. This right here is what the left ventricle will push blood into. It's going to go out from the top of your head to the tip of your toes after this aorta through many different pipes, many blood vessels. And here's the pulmonary trunk. This is what your right ventricle pushes blood to to send it to your lungs. So if you look at some of the other structures here, here's pulmonary veins and there's pulmonary arteries. Again, pulmonary arteries take blood away from the heart. Pulmonary veins bring it right back into the left side over here on this left atrium. Here's your right coronary artery found in this right coronary sulcus, this little groove right here. There's also a right marginal in this area. They just didn't label it right here on the front of this picture. Here's the inferior vena cava, returns all blood from below the heart. You'll see on the inside of this right atrium, there's a third inflow called the coronary sinus, which returns blood from the heart muscle itself. So it's all blood from above the heart, below the heart, and then the heart itself. Every bit of the blood from the entire body comes into this right atrium. There's part of the aorta there. We'll see that a little bit further along in some other pictures. Here they show what looks like a little bit of the left coronary artery, but this is primarily here the anterior descending. So this is the big artery right in here. Left coronary is a little bit more uh, up here on the top and around the back. Just didn't show it real well in this illustration. We're going to look at the 15 steps of blood flow through the heart, too, and this is a good picture for that. But again, here's your right atrium. And there's your left atrium. Here's your right ventricle. There's your left ventricle. Look at this wall between the ventricles. Again, that's your interventricular septum. You can't see the inner atrial because it's behind this aorta, but it is there. But again, here's superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. And there should be a third hole right in here, the coronary sinus returning blood from the heart muscle itself. Here's your right, notice how that says right atrioventricular valve, same as your tricuspid. Over here, the left atrioventricular valve, same as your bicuspid, same as the mitral valve. And it looks like they may have some of the pulmonary arteries up here and pulmonary veins. Whenever this right pump receives blood from the entire body, it pushes it to the lungs. And after it circulates through the lungs, comes right back in to the left side. And that pumps it out to the body, comes right back to the right side again. Sends it to the lungs, right back into the left side, out to the body, and over and over again. We'll look at all these major arteries and veins a little bit further along.